What's up, YouTube? Capital G here. Well, I guess this is where we are in this super scuffed year of 2020 for Yu-Gi-Oh! Even the OCG players have just thrown up their hands and they're like, yo, Cap, we ain't even about that deck building life anymore. All we do in the OCG is just play good engines and basically staple level cards and call it a day. What you guys are looking at is an OCG build of Neo Numeron, that's what they're calling it, which I guess is kind of self-explanatory, but like, let's be real, guys. As you look at this deck, this is pretty much just two engines thrown together, and I think it's kind of, it's insane, because I feel like even someone who just started playing Yu-Gi-Oh! in 2020 probably could have built this deck card for card if I was like, you know what, man, just build me a solid deck in like five minutes. I feel like anyone who started playing this game this year probably would have thrown together a deck that is uh, almost certainly this deck, maybe card for card, off maybe a couple of cards, because this is an OCG build. Keep in mind that there are some cards in the OCG, like Harpy's Feather Duster and, uh, you know, a second copy of Red Reboot that we don't have in the TCG, but my goodness, guys, this this is where we are. People are just like, nope, playing out Emancipators, too much work. We're just going to go ahead and play good engine and uh, can, can we just say staple, powerful, like, you know, good cards, dot deck. Now, keep in mind, people have uh, probably started scaling back on the whole 50 negates and all of that break my board type stuff, at least from the sense of making a bunch of negations because Link Cross did get banned in the OCG. So it kind of kills the whole Roradine and, you know, Halifax. I'm sure you can still do some of those in the OCG. But without Link Cross, makes it maybe a little more difficult to go into things like Boiled, uh, Savage Dragon. So most players are just playing the Numeron cards and like, yeah, we can make a bunch of negates. Or we can just make a zero, which is like literally all the negates. It's like infinity negates and then you just can't play. And uh, it's kind of crazy because, man, the power of just running a bunch of good engines. Now, look, I've said it for a long time. I said it the second these Numeron cards got revealed. I didn't know what the hell Konami was thinking when they decided to actually make these things. I know they're from the anime and people love themselves from Don Thousand. They tried to tell me for years in the comment section, Cap, you have no idea how broken Don Thousand's cards were in the anime. And I didn't believe people for a very long time because I'm like, okay, how broken can they really be? And then Konami decided to print them and uh, we can see that that was an immediate mistake because cards basically ruining the TCG and the OCG. So you're, you're basically going to get Numeron in everything, especially if Konami keeps hitting uh, Link monsters in the OCG, then there's just, there's more reason to run the Numeron cards. But obviously you got the Numeron cards and then you have the second half of the deck. Well, the second half of the monster side of the deck, which is basically just the uh, the Neo side. And I think it's kind of interesting to see the Neo's cards maybe seeing more um, or maybe seeing more popularity than even like the Red Eyes Dark Dragoon engine. Now, it could be because the Red Eyes Dark Dragoon engine, basically every piece of that engine is at limited status in the OCG. Verde Anaconda is limited. Also, um, uh, Red Eyes Fusion is limited. Obviously, Dark Dragoon is limited. And you don't have to deal with that problem when it comes to the Neo side. Also, I would argue that the Neo cards going second or Neo Fusion is probably like infinitely more powerful going second because Dragoon is powerful. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, 4,500 attack out of a monster that can get rid of every single monster in your opponent's side of the field by just giving up one monster is still insane. Rainbow Neos was always a ridiculously powerful card. Even back in the Phantom Darkness days, it's just, you know, we could never summon it until we got, uh, you know, Rainbow Neos. If you guys are wondering why the ne the one like Neo Spatian Hummingbird is in here, it's because, well, I'm not going to say for certain because I didn't interview this player or anything, but my theory is that if you happen to go into time of all the Neo Spatian monsters in the fusion, this is probably the one you want because Neo Spatian Hummingbird can actually just win the game by giving you light points in time. And then also, uh, it's fusion air Neos gains attack equivalent to the life point lead that you have. So, just another card. Now, I, th I thought it was really interesting. You see a bunch of hand traps in here. 
you see side frame gear gamma which is like the hand trap that stops everything ash blossom the most popular card in Yu-Gi-Oh. whether it be tcg ocg doesn't matter what g you play in ash blossom is going to be the most popular card in Yu-Gi-Oh. and then infinite impermanence which i would argue is the second most popular card in Yu-Gi-Oh. but no maximus cs for all you maxi boys out there cap g maxi's too broken it should never come back guys let me tell you a little secret they're not even playing Maxi in the OCG. With all the card by the graves and Ash Blossoms and all the other like stuff that can stop hand traps, which by the way, I was I was actually kind of surprised Card by the Grave was not in here. Uh, I mean Ash Blossom, it, it's super powerful, not gonna lie, when it resolves, but you know, the fact that everybody plays three ash and you can gamut and you can call by the grave, it's like sometimes Maxi just doesn't resolve, and even if it does resolve, if your opponent has S0 and you don't have the hand trap to stop it, you just lose the game anyways. We see some other powerful uh, cards in here, and actually, hold on one, one second, because this was actually kind of cool. I'll give them this. Playing Miracle Contact in the main deck, this is spicy. I can't even knock that. So, you guys know most Yu-Gi-Oh decks, they can resolve uh, Neo's Fusion into, like, Rainbow Fusion. But then that's basically it. They're, they can't, you know, summon any other... Uh, they can't summon the other, like, Neos monsters uh, from the extra deck. This deck can actually summon, uh, like, Rainbow Neos twice. Because if you resolve Neos Fusion, sure, you don't get the summon anymore. But hypothetically, if your opponent kills your Rainbow Neos or you don't kill them that turn, Miracle Contact can shuffle those materials back in your deck. And then you can actually just summon, like, another copy. Now, he only has one copy of Rainbow Neos. I personally would just ditch something like a link spider and play a second copy of rainbow neos because you are playing two of this and i feel like that actually could come up a lot you see also the performer pop pop up this was interesting but the reason i think that this is in here is because you got so many like hard once per turn cards it, it seems kind of inevitable that you will draw like multiples of some of these cards whether it be you know a, ne a neos fusion or something like a lightning storm like they're just a bunch of powerful cards if you draw multiple copies of them you really don't want them also Cyframe uh driver it's like another card you can just arbitrarily give up when you resolve your gamma you summon it back from the graveyard anyway so this is really interesting and you can maybe even make an argument that this is kind of like gamma or uh you know ash bait you activate perform a pop up your opponent ashes you maybe you gamma them and then it's pretty much just a wrap at that point even if you don't have any copies of omega we know that forbidden droplet seems to be one of the strongest breakboard cards in the ocg like players are just i mean they're playing this card basically as a staple like in every deck essentially as like one of the definitive go second cards but i guess technically it can be a go first card like if you set up strong enough uh this card can also be used for um you know go first i think you get right now is it's all about these versatile cards cards like gamma and just one forbidden drop infinite and permanence these cards that are not just good going first but then also technically good going second you know ash blossom falls into that category as well but this this is really interesting and uh this is honestly guys this could end up being like the meta in the tcg especially if konami does something like maybe on our next fnl list they hit some of the current cards that are out not including obviously battles of legends that will push us further to numeron and then we could see numeron combined with neos it's a very small engine is a lot of power in this and then you can just also run a bunch of hand traps because uh last thing is a lot of these hand traps and these dead cards they can technically be used for like the neos fusions because you can use them any level four or lower monster can be used for like brave neos so even if you draw like double gamma or you got like a dead ash blossom you can technically use those to fuse which is actually just kind of crazy but what do you guys think and um you know this is a deck that technically is like tcg legal if you just took this out and and this out and maybe just put some called by the graves boom there you go tcg meta <laughs> tcg meta now just add two called by the graves in there and this deck is 100 tcg legal it'll be interesting to see if this starts to pick up in popularity but this is kind of crazy guys 2020 the year we stopped playing archetypes and just played a bunch of good cards and called it a day but anyways let me know what you guys think in the comment section below how are you guys planning to deal with 
with the impending nightmare that is going to be Numeron. And do you guys consider this deck building when you just take Numeron and then throw in another engine? You know, I always thought that Neo Fusion was like really, really strong. I feel like Doug Zeef was so ahead of the curve by uh, by the way. Shout out to DZ because he's like one of the first people who saw Neo Fusion and was like, this is actually broken. <laughs> he saw that card and he was like, bro, this could be the new the new brilliant fusion. Maybe not as OP, but it has the power because yeah, guys, this is uh this could end up being the new hotness. And um, you know, going first, going second, it has power from both angles, a whole lot of cheese, and it is already successful in the OCG. Could be the next nightmare in the TCG. Thank you guys for watching. As always, subscribe if you have not already, and turn on that notification bell for daily videos.